All right, we're gonna turn this Kia over to where the cylinder is on top dead center. So this is the timing indicator right here, this little notch with a white mark. Uh, on this particular one, it's not to be confused with that one that doesn't have a notch. So, so we have that guy and then right up here, right above the balancer, right up here, that's our, our timing pointer on the timing case. So on this particular one, it's that far, uh, what's our left notch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this uh, crankshaft over to where those two line up. Can you right there? Turn like this. All right, so we have it on top dead center. We're gonna let the car down and we're gonna hook up the leak down tester. All right, so we, we rolled the crankshaft over uh, with the, the front crankshaft bolt. And remember, you always wanna turn this in the direction of rotation. Uh, you don't wanna turn it backwards for possibility of the timing chain jumping. Uh, but if your engine doesn't have timing marks, another way that you can do it you can get a wooden dowel so with your spark plugs out you can put this wooden dowel down in your spark plug hole and when you turn the engine over slowly this wooden dowel is going to raise up and when it stops raising up you know that that piston's on top dead center so uh, right now we know that that cylinder one is top dead center if you look cylinder two and three your bottom and then cylinder four is also top dead center. The only thing we don't know is we don't know which stroke that the engine's on. So both one and four are at top dead center, but one of them is going to be on the compression stroke where we need to be doing the testing. And the other one's gonna be on the exhaust stroke. So just finishing the exhaust stroke. So it will have a uh, valve still open. So that being said, we're gonna put some air to the cylinder on cylinder one, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, and that's gonna tell us our leak down. So we got our leak down tester here. So this looks very similar to the compression tester, but the big difference is this does not have a Schrader valve installed in the end of the hose. So if you're using the same hose from your compression tester or switching in between the two, you need to make sure and remove that because you want full air pressure to the cylinder. So same thing goes here. This one's a 12 millimeter uh, spark plug. So we got to use an adapter. So we're gonna screw that on. Just gotta be hand tight. And we're gonna screw this into the cylinder or the spark plug hole for the cylinder. Then we're gonna get our regulator. And what I like to do is I like to always make sure that the pressure is turned down on this. So on this particular pressure regulator, when you push, it locks that adjustment in. So you gotta pull it out so you can turn it. So just like it shows on here, left is all the way minus. So we want to go all the way negative. Then we're going to hook our shop air up to it. So with shop air hooked up, this is going to show us how much pressure we're putting in the cylinder from shop air. And this one's going to show us how much the cylinder is holding. So we're just, just slowly start turning it up. So if you look, we're putting 10 in, it's holding 10, 20, 20. So I usually tell people to set these at a, a easy, easily divisible number. So you know, a lot of folks go to 100. Uh, your shop air may not go to 100. Ours here sometimes does not. So it looks like about 95 is about as high as we can go. So I'm just gonna go easy number there. We're gonna go to 90. And if you look, this cylinder is holding what looks like, oh, about 88 or so, 88 PSI. So you can do that, that pretty simple math there uh, and determine that it has a really low leakage rate. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, again, here, if you wanna go easy math, we can go back to 50. So if we're putting 50 in and it's holding 49, so 
if you wanted a percentage out of 100, you know, double this. So you got 100% uh, percent and it's holding about 98% of what you're putting in. So pretty tight cylinder. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, before you disconnect, there is gonna be that residual pressure. So I always like to turn this back down. And then we're going to disconnect from the cylinder and we'll move to the next cylinder. So uh, on this one, we are going to uh, test cylinder four. And I'll show you here, I'll turn it over while Jake watches that, that uh, dowel rod and you'll see it go down and then back up and I'll set it back up on the timing mark. So you gotta remember if, if <clears throat> Uh, since this four cylinder engine, this, the crankshaft has to turn two complete revolutions for all four firing events. So, uh, for all four strokes of that particular cylinder. So that being said, if this one's on the exhaust stroke, we need to turn it over one full turn and that should get us back on the compression stroke. So Jake's going to watch this. I'll turn it over. All right, so we turned it over one full revolution. As you tell, we're back up at top dead center. Our center two cylinders are at bottom dead center. Cylinder one, back at top dead center. So we're gonna repeat for cylinder four. On this particular car, we had a low compression on cylinder four. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the leak down, see where it's leaking. So I got the hose installed. We're gonna connect it up to the gauge manifold. And all we gotta do, make sure this is unlocked and we're gonna slowly increase the pressure. So you can already tell we have pretty high leakage rate. So at 50, it's only holding about 15 PSI. So if you think about that, double 50 to 100, we're only holding about 30%. So we have 70% leakage. So that's quite a bit. So the big question is, where is that pressure going? So if we have low compression and we have clearly it's leaking down, it's good to know where the compression pressure is going. So you gotta think where are the possibilities. So uh, easy possibilities are one of the valves is uh, not sealing correctly. So, you know, we have an intake and exhaust valve for each cylinder. Uh, I believe this one actually has four valves per cylinder. So two intake, two exhaust per cylinder. So we need to find out where that's going. So pretty easy way to do it is where, if the intake valve was leaking, where would you hear that air rushing out? If the exhaust valve was leaking, where would you hear that air rushing out? Well, exhaust, pretty easy. The tailpipe intake's pretty easy. Right here at the throttle body or the air cleaner. So, let's see if we can get this loose. Listen, sometimes you actually have to put your ear to it. So you can kind of hear it coming out there. Sometimes you might have to do one of these kind of cap it off with your hand, feel for air. Me personally, I, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but you can hear air building up. Come a little closer. So if you listen real carefully, you can kind of hear it. All right, let's go back to the tailpipe. So same thing here, we got our tailpipe. I kind of put my hand over it. Sometimes you gotta put your ear to it. I don't hear near as much back here as I do from the intake. Can't really feel the air. I don't really hear it. So let's go back to the engine. So uh, other places that might leak. You gotta think that cylinder head, you know, goes on top 
uh, of each cylinder, right? So what seals that cylinder head to the block to each cylinder? That'd be a head gasket. So if the head gasket was compromised or, or blown or leaking, you might see pressure in the cooling system. So take that off. You could listen in there, same way. Or if you see bubbles bubbling up from that air pressure that's going there, that's a pretty clear giveaway as well. Uh, you know, ones that are a little harder to track down is maybe if you have a cracked cylinder head or a cracked block, something like that. Uh, those are a little harder to do, but cooling system, both valves, so intake valve, the tailpipe with the exhaust valve, and then there's one thing that's left, uh, piston and ring. So you gotta see how well those are. So if the rings or piston were leaking down into the crankcase, you know, past the piston down into the engine, good place to check there. It's gonna be your oil cap. So take that oil cap off and kind of listen. You might do your hand over it again. See if you feel anything. Uh, another quick one is sometimes you can pull out the dipstick, right? And you can put your thumb over that dipstick. So put that thumb over the dipstick, listen for pressure. Uh, at this point, what it looks like is our biggest leak looks to be coming from the intake valves. So you can really feel a lot of air volume right here at the intake. So we can even try cranking this up a little bit. So let's see if we can go as high as it'll go. So we're putting in 90, it's only holding about 25. So that's not good at all, not good at all. So, so you can really hear that air rushing. I'll put my hand over there for a few seconds. So you can really hear it. So definitely come out that intake. So uh, one thing I will say is don't get confused. This does have a breather hose here coming from the crankcase. So if, if you were suspicious of that, you might isolate that breather hose, you know, Oh, yeah, I take that back. There's a lot of air coming out of that crankcase. So that might have uh, disguised our intake valves. Yep, I think it did. So you can definitely tell. So that air pressure is going down in the crankcase for sure. So this would be one of those plug this pull that dipstick a lot of pressure going in that crankcase so uh, that indicates you know we have uh, a leaky uh, piston ring or maybe a cracked piston something to that effect so you gotta think that cylinder essentially is leaking out the bottom you know into the crankcase so pretty easy test to do uh, the big thing to note, though, is you have to make sure that that piston is on top dead center of the compression stroke for each cylinder. So you would do it. And we did two cylinders here. So you just turn over the engine for each time and get that, that cylinder uh, at top dead center for each of the four cylinders on this one. So but that gives you a good idea how well that cylinder is sealed up and where it might be leaking. So you could tear it down and inspect from there.